So our priorities as a SISM, one of the first things we're going to focus on is understanding not just the requirements, but what is effective information security governance. You know, we talk about governance versus management. We talk about risk governance, risk management, risk appetite, risk tolerance, you know, security management, all these different terms. But let's start by focusing in on information security governance. Who provides that governance, what it means, what good governance is going to look like. And then we're going to allow those governing entities to help us determine where we want to be and then from a broad line how we're going to get there. That's going to be done through our information security strategy and roadmap. And that roadmap is really going to be our plan of action, right? It's starting off pretty good. All right, listen, um, thank you for those of you that asked some questions. I was able to get those over at break, and I just wanted to address those before we move on. So the first question I saw was, uh, the question was, is Domain One a subset of CGEIT, which is Certified in Governance of Enterprise um, Information Technology, Information, shoot, uh, I, <laughs> Enterprise IT, I, I total brain drain this morning. So the answer is, honestly, most of this class is a subset of CGEIT. Um, this is absolutely um, an extremely helpful precursor to the CGIT course, and so much of what we talk about here will expand upon in CGIT. So yes, when we talk about governance here, when we talk about oversight, when we talk about um, risk management, yeah, all of these things feed into the CGIT. As a matter of fact, for me, if you were looking to go into information security management, certifications that I would recommend would be CISP, C-I-S-S-P, and then CISM, and then C-G-E-I-T, Certified in Governments of Enterprise IT. Um, so hopefully that answered the question. So yes, it really is a subset and a lot of what's in here. As a matter of fact, if you took what's in this course, what's in CISSP, what's in the CISA course for understanding the significance of audit and its impact, and you take the CRIS course, which is a focus on exclusively risk uh, in information security, I think that would make up the CGIT. So basically all of these certifications, by the time you've taken these courses, you're pretty much ready to go get your CGIT, you know. So that just means you have four courses, CISSP, CISM, CISA, C-RISC, and then you'll be right there at the point for the CGIT. All right, second question, what was confidentiality defined as? I think that got answered, but confidentiality can best be defined as um, preventing unauthorized disclosure of information, preventing unauthorized disclosure. And then we had the I, the integrity, which is being able to detect modification. And then availability being defined as providing timely access to resources. So sometimes through class we can go through things kind of quickly, and I appreciate you guys that will stop and put these questions out. I'm always happy to repeat. All right, what are some key pointers one should remember while answering the questions? Mostly two options seem correct. And what a great question. And this sounds like to me uh, the person that asked this question has some experience testing because one of the things that you'll find on a lot of these certification tests, as a matter of fact, the ones I just mentioned, CISM, CISA, CJIT, CISSP, is a lot of times you can narrow down the questions uh, or the answers often to two. Like often one qu answer is just way out of left field. It's like thermal flux capacitor. It's something crazy, right? And then you've got three answers left. Well, maybe answer C would work, but it seems a little convoluted. But then, man, you've got A and B that both look good, and there doesn't seem to be a real difference between the two. There are a couple of things that I can tell you. Um, First, answer business first, always. And by that I mean, who's the decision maker? The business. Who is the customer? The business. Who has the liability? The business, the business, the business. The IT is in the backdrop of the business. So most of these questions that talk about, you know, when there's a conflict between, um, 
an information security risk profile and the implementation is chosen by the business, which solution is correct? Well, or, or who gets to decide the implementation? The business. The business. Another thing to remember is try not to have any sort of action. Okay, so my first thing tells you to look at the business first. Try to answer business more than IT. Okay, um, then try not to act. Always step back, assess, and advise. So a SISM's never going to be the one carrying out these decisions, right? As a SISM, I'm not down in the basement uh, uh, disabling accounts. I'm not out there revoking someone's credentials. I'm not out there reconfiguring a firewall, right? So when something comes up, my step is to back up and if there's an answer that says stop, do a risk assessment, man, that is almost always right. You know, for example, you have, um, it's been brought to your attention that a division in ABC organization is not following the standard policy in relation to blah, blah, blah. What should you do? So answer A is enforce the policy. B is report to senior management. C is disregard the fact that they're out of compliance. And D is perform a risk assessment. Perform a risk acceptance, uh, assessment. But wait, they're out of compliance. Yeah, sometimes departments are out of compliance. Sometimes systems are out of compliance. Well, doesn't that need to go to senior management? Yes, but we don't just report problems to senior management, right? We, bring, we don't bring problems. We bring solutions. So what that means is step back, conduct a risk assessment so that when you do bring this to senior management, you have information, right? To every policy, there are exceptions, and many of those exceptions are legitimate. So rather than saying policy must be enforced, step back, conduct a risk assessment. Doesn't mean that that's a six-month study, right? If it's something critical, then, then the risk assessment can be done very quickly, can be a quick information gathering and provide that. But the first step, when possible, should always be step back, step back and conduct an assessment. The next thing that I would tell you is with your questions, when you've got two that seem the same or seem decent, think end game. All right. So when I say end game, many times they'll ask you a question and all answers seem accurate. But there's only one that really satisfies the question. I just went over this with the CISSP course. So if there are any of you that are here from CISSP, this will be a repetition, but that's fine. Um, so a question could be, why do we classify data? Why do we classify data? Now, answer A might be to indicate the harm if that data is compromised. Answer B might be to indicate the value of the data. C might be um, to imply the sensitivity or to, to demonstrate the sensitivity of the information. And then D is to dictate the security controls to put in place. Okay, so answer A to indicate the damage if that information is compromised. Well, that's true of classification, right? When I make something top secret, it's true that that indicates a very high amount of damage if that information is compromised. So that's true, but that's not why we classify. I don't just classify something to say, man, it would really hurt us if this information got out. Just like I don't classify information to say, wow, look how valuable this is. I classify information to dictate how to protect that information. If all I do is say, wow, this is hugely valuable, and then I walk off, I've made myself more vulnerable, right? So when I say think endgame, what is the point that you can say, I've satisfied the equation here? I've done what I came to do, wash my hands, I can go home for the day. The reason we classify data is because classification mandates certain security controls, okay? That's the reason. Why do we train employees? To raise awareness? I don't care about awareness. 
we train people to modify their behavior. You being aware doesn't help me unless you being aware makes you change your behavior. I know a lot of people aware that they shouldn't be clicking on links and emails, and they still clicking on links and emails, right? We know it's out. I know it's none of y'all. I know it's none of you guys, but people are aware of what they should do. That's worthless to me. I am held accountable based on what my employees do and how they act, not what they know. So those, that one piece really changed once it occurred to me that that's because I was missing a lot of these questions, you, and I've been teaching this stuff for a long time. It's taken me a while to really see, you know, some of the subtleties of those questions, but those would just be some of the best tips, tips that I can give you. There's also, if you'll go to YouTube, there is, I have a video that is, uh, it says 10 reasons you will pass the CISSP. 10 reasons you will pass the CISSP. And this, it, honestly, this is not just the CISSP. This is for all of these certification exams. Those are just some test-taking tips about how to read the questions, the way to think about them, how to prioritize, how to split the hairs that are different for questions. So um, on YouTube, Kelly Handerhan, 10 Reasons You Will Pass the CISSP will add to that a little bit. But that's just kind of the highlights of, of what I would tell you. Now then I had um, another question about the importance of oversight in information protection. What a great question. And, and it's interesting because I saw that on that slide as well and I kind of glossed over it because I know it's something we're going to talk about later. But I appreciate you calling me on that because we should really pause and talk about the importance of oversight. And when we're talking about information information security governance. That is one of the main roles. When we talk about oversight, we're making sure that we're providing the structure for information security, the support. We're making sure also, though, that our programs and our controls and our procedures, that they're working. So we're also responsible for monitoring and measuring and ensuring that we maintain compliance to make sure that our plans are tested and that we review the test results and we make modifications as necessary. Long and short of it is oversight is a huge piece of due care and due diligence. Due care and due diligence. Now don't take this back to law school with you, but due diligence is research, due care is action. Okay, due diligence is research, due care is action. So when we talk about due diligence as a senior manager, right, as a CEO, CIO, whatever uh, my role is, even a little further down as the CISM, my job is to know what laws we're accountable to, to follow, what regulations apply to us, what industry standard best practices are, what threats and vulnerabilities, you know, and learning all of that, that's part of due diligence. Understanding the context of my organization, understanding what the threats and vulnerabilities that are particular to my organization, as well as more generic threats and vulnerabilities. To do risk management and risk mitigation, that's all, you know, risk management and that risk identification piece and assessment piece, that's all part of due diligence. And then the due care is to act upon it. So it's my job to make sure that we're doing the right things and to make sure that we're doing them the right way. Right? And that's all part of oversight. And effective governance says it's not enough just to stand up a security program and then go to the beach for a couple of weeks, right? That security program has to have ongoing oversight. We have objectives set. We measure and monitor and work towards those objectives. And when we're not meeting those objectives, we go back to the drawing board. Right? So oversight is huge, and I really appreciate you asking that question. We're going to see that come up again.